Now, recently I read that a Harvard epidemiologist, Mark Lipsitch, predicted that COVID-19 would be a global pandemic, likely, mm -hmm. um, that would or could infect 40 to 70 percent of the world. What do you think of that prediction? Well, uh, first of all, Mark Lipsitch was uh, one of my professors. When really? I yeah, so he's <laughs> a real expert, <laughs> expert, expert. But uh, speaking uh, to the statistics that he uh, predicted, um, I think it has a very strong basis. Really? Yeah, based on what we uh, currently understand about this, uh, the transmissibility of the disease, um, something called reproduction number. So on an average, one person can, one person can affect or infect two to three more people um, in the absence of any you know, intervention. So uh, based on this kind of uh, understanding, um, it's quite, uh, you know, if there's no intervention, it's quite likely that the disease can go on and spread and affect the majority of the population. Wow. Yeah. So, so what do you mean by intervention? Is that you're talking about the steps that we've been taking here in Taiwan, like wearing surgical masks, taking people's temperatures? What do you mean about intervention? Yeah. Um, so I, what I mean was that um, if in the absence of, you know, um, doing anything, they would mm -hmm. be very, very bad. But whether, um, you know, things like um, um, face mask wearing um, or um, hand washing or um, even um, social distancing mm -hmm. uh, would be very helpful is still a question. We're still um, learning how effective these interventions can be. Yeah. Well, it is kind of scary hearing you say that you actually agree with his prediction. Is it because we don't know how... Uh, easily it's transmitted or that it has been transmitted very easily? Tell me more about why okay. you're so worried. Yeah, uh, so a couple of things. Uh, first of all, it's a new pathogen, it's a new disease. We know it's for sure. So no one in the world is, has a natural immunity. And currently there's no vaccine available mm -hmm. yet. So, uh, so in, in brief, everyone can be infected. Okay, and then secondly, the, um, our knowledge about the reproduction number, you know, one can infect two to three people. Um, uh, you know, there's a strong uh, theoretical basis behind that, saying if, you know, two to three more people can get infected, then uh, the, you know, at the end of the epidemic, um, you know, a lot of people um, up to, you know, 70, 80% can be infected. Wow. And thirdly, uh, uh, the, the current understanding about uh, this COVID-19 um, compared to SARS is that it can be transmitted um, at a relatively earlier stage. Um, so in, in other words, um, people can unlikely transmit the disease in the absence of symptom or even uh, in the very early stage of the disease compared to SARS where the transmission usually happened after the people, you know, get sick for, you know, a couple of days. So that makes the control very um, different and challenging. Right. So what do we know about how uh, COVID-19 is transmitted? Um, well, we're still learning, um, but the, uh, the current evidence from the various reports uh, suggests that, first of all, we know that there uh, is um, people, there is uh, asymptomatic infection. So people can be infected without having any symptoms. Mm -hmm. And second, we also know that the clinical uh, manifestation of people who get infected can range from very, very mild symptom to um, very, very severe, including mortality. So what does that depend on? Does it depend on how healthy they are as a person or their age in, in terms of how serious the disease affects them? Yeah, so, uh, so far the, 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 the most, uh, the strongest predictor of, you know, severe disease is probably age. So it mm -hmm. seems that um, uh, those who are very young, the, the, the little kids, the young kids, uh, the, even if they get infected or get, they get exposed, the probability of severe disease is very, very small. On the other hand, the, the elderly or those with uh, multiple uh, health problems, comorbidities, will have the higher, much higher risk of mm -hmm. severe disease and mortality. Yeah. What do you think about the treatments that are being developed, like remdesivir? Are you optimistic that these can help, you know, treat uh, serious cases? Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I can be optimistic. But so currently what we know about remdesivir is that it works uh, in non-human studies, 
Mm -hmm. you know? And it, it seems that there's a case report in the U.S. Mm -hmm. that a, a patient treated with uh, brindesivir seemed to improve, but that's only one case. So I know there are several large um, clinical studies, clinical trials, um, trying to um, answer this question whether this is going to work or not. So we're all waiting uh, very anxiously about the answer. And there's other treatments as well, right? Exactly. The Vilavir, um, yeah. Do you think that these um, will enable people to get better, or what is your prediction about these treatments? Well, I, this, I really can't predict until, okay. until the, the, yeah, the, the clinical trial results are revealed. But uh, I think the good thing is that we have a handful of antiviral drugs at hand. We don't need to develop from the pipeline from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So we're using, we're kind of redirecting the use of uh, you know, previously existing drugs uh, for the purpose of fighting and COVID-19, so that's a good thing. So that's what's being done with current patients? Yeah, so they're trying a number of antiviral drugs um, in different um, clinical studies, and we're hoping that at least we know uh, which one works and which one uh, didn't work. Mm. Yeah. And as for the fatalities, do you see a common thread that, you know, how worried should we be about how uh, deadly the disease is? Yeah, so the fatality or the case fatality ratio is the proportion of people who um, will die among those who get the disease, mm -hmm. right? So it really depends on how you define the people with the disease. Uh, do you define those people um, very sick, needing hospitalization, or do you define people including these asymptomatic um, infections? So that will affect the number. Oh, sure. Yeah, so currently um, the often quoted number is like 1% among those with symptoms, mm -hmm. among those with you know, um, obvious disease. Uh, so one out of 100. But again, this ratio um, varies greatly across population. So in Wuhan, we're seeing very much higher uh, case fatality because of the overburdened healthcare system. And also age, as I said, is a very important predictor. So it's going to be the, the fatality rate will be much higher among the elderly compared to the young people and the very young people. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just curious, how worried should the average healthy person be? Is it just like the flu, you know, in terms of how it could um, be deadly, or is it just because it's an unknown disease, so you know, right. there's so much anxiety? Right. Um, so the, uh, speaking of the case fatality ratio, if, if you get the disease, right, the, the, the ratio is anywhere between flu and SARS. So okay. what we know is that it's going to be very likely less uh, fatal compared to SARS mm -hmm. 2003, and it will be much more fatal compared to flu. Mm. Yeah, so it's not flu. Yeah, okay. so it's like 10 times. It's more serious yeah. than the flu. Yeah. yeah, more serious, yeah. 